That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Boy and the Heron, which I believe is the 12th feature from Hayao Miyazaki uh, from Studio Ghibli uh, that is being released in the United States by G Kids on December 8th, 2023. Whenever I hear Ghibli, I have to give a shout out to Maserati. One day they'll sponsor me. I really want a quattro porte. But anyway, I'm going to tell the very basic story. Oh, but first the director. Uh, Miyazaki. Uh, you are familiar. You've seen Spirited Away, which I maintain is his best film. Uh, but he, I, I mean, there is no one better known or more celebrated in his, the craft of anime than he is. Noted. Okay, the very basic story. It's 1940s Japan, and this little boy, his mom dies. Mahito. In a fire. A hospital fire during the Pacific War. Mm -hmm. So... Ultimately, the dad gets married, remarried, and then they move off. And now this... Remarried to his her sister, Natsuko. The dad gets remarried to the mom's younger sister. Mm -hmm. So they move somewhere else. In the countryside to her estate. And the boy is having a difficult time with the transition, with grieving the loss of his mother. He's also being pestered by a bird, a heron. Mm-hmm. And one day he sees his new stepmom, who is now pregnant, run off into a tower. Mm -hmm. And it's important to know that tower was built by the little boy's grand uncle, who was an architect. Mm -hmm. Who disappeared mysteriously, yes. And this bird can talk to the boy. And the bird tells the boy, you should go in there. You know, your mom is in there. <laughs> so he goes in there. And when he gets inside the tower, it's like a magical world, like the Wizard of Oz. Yes, basically. And the granduncle is there. He's like running this world, like Oz. And a lot of there are a lot of different characters and things, but there's man-eating parakeets and some pelicans eating the local flora and fauna that are these pudgy things called Wara Wara. But the main thing is that the granduncle is saying, like, I need you to take over because like to run this magical place because it needs to be someone who's blood related and pure of heart. But the boy decides he's not going to do it because he's not pure of heart. Earlier in the story, he had injured himself, like, deliberately. With a rock. Mm -hmm. To try to tell a story that, like, he's being bullied. And also, he wants to go back home. But So that is what's happening in the magical world. But also, he meets, like, the younger version of his mother. Mm -hmm. And he's telling her, like, why don't you come with me? And she's like, I can't. I have to live... In my alternate In my reality. alternate life or else you won't ever be born. Mm -hmm. So he ends up going back at and, the end. And the heron <laughs> who is kind of combative says one day you're going to forget about this. And, and that's all we, they, we... They go back into their world and there's some narration that says two years after the war ended we move back to Tokyo. What do you think the moral of this story is? <laughs> I think it's about... Well, my pull quote... Oh. This review is all over the place. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Miyazaki's potential swan song returns to grim subtext in this increasingly strange fantasy about loss, grief, and transitioning in the sor sorrowful world of adulthood. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think it's it's about kind of giving up your selfish, childish ways. But this, this is a, a weird story for sure. It's actually based on a 1937 book of the same name, who I believe the author, when Miyazaki, because Miyazaki's been working on this, since his last film, like 2013. Uh, and it's probably, The Wind Rises in 2012 was supposed to be his last movie. And then he did a short film and he's like, no, I want to do one more. So this, oh. this is likely his last one. But uh, it's in keeping with the strangeness of his oeuvre. Uh, I do like it, because I actually had a triple feature the day I watched this to catch up with some films of his I hadn't seen, uh, including uh, Ponyo and um, My Neighbor Totoro. And both of those deal with children, very annoying, young, I don't really like precocious children. I could uh, hear you watching those movies and the, the screechy voices were <laughs> getting to be. They, were, they, they were not my favorites, even though I know both of those are beloved by people. Um, uh, to me, I think Spirited Away is still his masterpiece, but, uh, and, and some other interesting titles in there. But I like that this one is a, it's a lot darker. I think the heron is terrifying it because as it starts to appear and it starts to speak to him uh you see teeth like big choppers in it and then you realize there's this little troll like man living inside the heron uh 
<laughs> but it, it is very much like Wizard of Oz in scope. Um, and I think that if you are a fan of Miyazaki, then of course you're going to like this because there's all the signature animated flourishes using the same uh, cinematographer he's, who I believe has worked with him since Porco Rosso. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's entertaining. I would recommend seeing it in the theater. Uh, the fact that it's his last film, I think, makes it feel a little more imperative than it might otherwise be. But I do, I mean, I thought The Wind Rises was really dry. So this is giving you something to feast on if you're a fantasy hound. What else you got there? Uh, that's about it. What would you give? Oh, and, and the weirdness of the dad marrying his aunt and then he's going to be having a cousin, brother, or sister. Uh, <laughs> I I feel like there are more interesting things that I would have rather pushed if I were writing the narrative, but uh, but you aren't blank. But uh, but I'm not. Yeah. What would you give this movie? Three out of five. Yeah. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.